You are not going to believe this. I have fallen out of love with Rank Math. There are tons of WordPress tools and solutions out there for you to implement SEO onto your website. You got to do that if you want to be found in the Google search rankings. Never, never, ever, ever, ever ignore SEO. Now, Rank Math for a good four years, I found quite simple and easy to use. However, there were so many settings and tabs you had to go through. Now, one thing it did do really, really well was with regards to the Google verification and Google search console. You just click a few buttons and it all went through totally fine. But there were loads of other things you had to do. And often it felt like a tick box exercise, especially when you were going through every single page and post. You're trying to hit all the green ticks and check marks because you don't want to fall foul of SEO. But if you are building in a methodical way and you've already thought about your keywords and your alt images and loads of stuff like that, you should have kind of catered for all of them anyway. And also Rank Math started implementing a heck of a lot of AI into their tools as well. And I started to find that a little bit distracting. Now this video is not about bashing Rank Math or any other SEO tool out there because all of them have their faults, pros and cons, okay? And Rank Math is still a good solution for you to use. However, the tool of choice that I have now moved to and I'm gonna be transferring loads of my websites over to this and I've been testing it out and I really like it is Slim SEO. You can use this for free. Now, before anyone says this is a sponsored video or anything like that, it is not. It's a free plugin. There's no affiliate links or anything like that whatsoever. They do have some premium add-ons, which you can see here, but you don't need to go for this. So if anyone from Slim SEO is watching and they do want you to go for it, hey, look, you make that choice. But you can use the free plugin totally out of the box and it is super ridiculously simple to use. But I do want to throw a caveat in at this point because it is so simple you will lose some of the intricacies that you could have covered off with other SEO plugins. After using SEO tools for so long, I can honestly say that this ticks the boxes, slim SEO for what I want to do. Because there's loads of things you could do to the nth degree, but does it really make a solid difference to the SEO of your website? Kind of relates to some page speed performance plugins out there as well. I've done videos where I've said you can do a heck of a lot with like really simple plugins of free ones or code snippets, or you could go and get a premium product, which does a lot more, but is it really doing a lot more? Or is it just giving you loads of settings that you have to click? Now back to Slim SEO, inside of your WordPress repository, do a search for Slim SEO and go and install and activate it. Let's go to the settings, go to your WordPress admin dashboard, go to settings and then click Slim SEO. Now get ready for how simple this is. First off, it's giving me a couple of friendly warnings. So it's saying on my RSS feed is currently set to full text. Maybe I don't want to release all of the text. Maybe if someone has got an RSS feed to my website, I only want to show an excerpt, which I would recommend. And also I'm not using a pretty permalink structure. By the way, I've intentionally set those off so that you see the warning you get. I'm gonna to go to the reading one first. And over here, I'm gonna say that I only want you to see the excerpt if you are gonna enable an RSS feed. Let's go and save that. Then I'm gonna to go to my permalinks. And at the moment it's set to plain. Why would anyone do that? So I'm gonna go and click post name and again hit save changes. When I go back to Slim SEO, those two warnings have disappeared. So that was quite nice and easy, right? So if you haven't set your permalinks or your excerpts are set to full text, you may want to go and change that. Now, even though I said that one of my bugbears with Rank Math and other tools was the amount of tabs you got to go through, you're going to look at this and go, well, that's a whole load of settings and there's tabs at the top still. And I actually preferred the dashboard approach that some of the other bigger SEO tools give you. This is a little bit misleading because I can actually tell you now that once you've installed and activated, these are all enabled. I did not enable them. You can disable them if you want, but my recommendation is that you leave them as they are. I mean, go through and methodically check. And if you're a little bit unsure about what does the meta robots tag mean, go and click it and you'll be taken over to the documentation where you're going to get further explanation. And the documentation they give you is really that damn good. You don't have to sit there watching loads of videos. Not that there's anything wrong with watching a YouTube video or anything of that sort. But this is pretty crystal clear and easy to understand. And there is a link at the top of the screen as well for you to go and see the documentation. But what I would recommend you do is you leave the meta title and description. You've got to do that. 
You need the meta robot, the open graph, the Twitter cards. You know, so if you're going to be socially sharing a page or a post, you want that to feed through. You want the sitemap. How about generating alt text? Now, I will say, though, that when it generates the alt text, all it's going to do is take the file name and pop that as the alt text. It hasn't got any fancy AI where it's going to analyze an image and go, well, that's an image of someone sitting in a cafe. If you've called your image man in a cafe, it will say that. If you've got like EX1256789 because you've just taken it from your phone, it will also do that. So I'll leave it enabled, but whenever you add images to your media library, you should go back and refine the alt text anyway, because you might want to add in a bit more detail than what you had in the file name. Schema, redirection, all of that. That's all you got to do. You just leave it as it is. Because remember, this is slim SEO. In comparison to lots of other tools, this is super, super light. So when you install it, and I've gone to inspect it, these are the file sizes I got for lots of very popular SEO tools. Now, there is nothing wrong with being big, and there's nothing amazing if you are really light in size as well, because some of the bigger ones do have loads of other images and things that they show you within the dashboard. Slim SEO is literally just very, very slim. Now let's go to the second tab, which is code. And if you were going to connect this up to Google Analytics and you get like the Google Analytics Tag Manager code or anything else like that, you can go and drop them in. And this is where other SEO tools would kind of take the headache away from maybe doing this. And headache is slightly the wrong word. I've exaggerated it because that would then mean you've got to do a few extra steps because you obviously want to connect your site to Google Search Console. Google Analytics if you want to get the analytics as well. What you would have to do in this scenario is you're going to have to go and do your connections, get your Google Tag Manager, and then chuck that over. And then you would also need to make sure your website is verified as well. Again, like I said, Rank Map and other tools do handle this a lot better. There have been scenarios where I've used Rank Map on a website and it's using a well-known hosting provider, whatever, and normally everything should have gone through okay. But even still, it's connected to Google Search Console via Rank Math. I still have to go to Google Search Console sometimes and double approve the verification process. And I still have to go and add a record into the domain or whatever. There's steps you got to go through. I still have to do that. And it's a little bit annoying as to why does it work sometimes and not the other time. So if you're used to doing that, the steps you're going to have to do aren't that difficult. And by the way, if you don't know what the steps are, do not worry because Slim SEO give you the guidance. I'll pop the link for this in the video description. And this goes through how do you set up Google Analytics, not just what you do in Slim SEO, if you have to do anything at all in some cases, but logging in and how do you set it up? What are the uh, settings that you have to go and click and pick? And it goes through it really, really well. And the same with Google Search Console, especially when you get to the verification process and what you need to do if you need to go and add in an MX or a text record or something to your domain. Again, you're probably going to say, I don't really want to have to do all of this. In that case, Slim SEO is not going to be for you, but it's made crystal clear. It's easy to follow. And like I said, it's really quick to get through. And you're probably going to have to go through some of these processes anyway even if you use a bigger SEO plugin. You don't have to do the Google Analytics if you don't care about the numbers and you just want to ensure you're in the ranking tree, then you would just do Google Search Console and the verification. But you go and make your mind up about that. But that second tab code was just where you could go and drop in your code. The meta tags. This allows you to define by default what the meta tags and description will be per page and post. Now, I would always say that for every product, every post, every page, you go in and refine it manually, okay? Don't just pop in the title, which nine times out of 10 could be okay for a post, but it might be that you want to refine it. So if you want to have certain styles applied for pages and posts, you can go and do that. If I'm going to be honest, I won't be worrying about any of this, okay? I'm just going to leave it as default, but then I will manually go in to my pages that I want to index or certain posts, and I will refine what the description is. But with the social tab, go and add in your Facebook and your Twitter image. Why wouldn't you do that? Because if anyone ever shares a link, you want it to show that. Now, don't worry, you'll have a default one here for the entire site, but you can have individual Facebook and Twitter images for individual pages and posts because maybe you want to show or say something different. Let's say you've got a shop page and you don't just want to have an image of a shop or a product. You actually want to have text on the image. 
that says something about why people should come to your shop. So it's like a mini advertising marketing tool. Images should not just be images. Images can have text on them as well. So you can do that per page post and product as well. If you want to go and get Facebook analytics, I don't really care about that. You can go and stick your app ID in uh, other tools. If you want to migrate from other, you can do. I've tested this out. Sometimes it then requires you to do a little bit more. So if you've already got a website that's already using rank math and it's working totally fine, it's completely set up, maybe just leave it. I mean, you know, unless they, unless you're paying like a premium or a pro version and you now want to move to a free tool or something like that, I could understand the migration. But if it's working and it's all set up and you don't need to worry about it, I would probably say leave it as it is. I am in the process of transferring some websites over just because I'm a bit fed up of how many tabs to go through. Again, I'm contradicting myself, aren't I? But you go and make that choice because if you do use any one of these, there may be extra other things to do. Look, no migration kit when you go from one host to another sometimes is absolutely perfect. And you can't expect plugin to plugin to also behave exactly the same. Just my bit of advice there. And if you have got any pages that have got dead URLs, etc., they're not going to the right place. You can go and set up your URL so you say where it's going or coming from and where does it need to go to. That in its simplicity was slim SEO, all right? So if I wasn't talking about half the things here, I would have just installed and kind of gone, right, now I just move on to my individual pages and posts and just go and ensure I've got the right meta title and description, which is what you would have to do for any other SEO tool as well, whether you're using Yoast, Rank Math, All-in-One, Squirrely, whatever you're using, okay, you're still going to have to go through and set them. Don't ever rely on AI to handle all of that for you because it will sometimes get it wrong especially if you are trying to reinforce and promote certain SEO keywords and key phrases. Okay, so that was the really, really slim, easy settings to go through. What about when you get to the actual page or post? When we go to my dummy page, you'll notice three new columns, meta title, meta description, and index. If it's got a cross, it's not being indexed. And this is what is really beautifully wonderful about slim SEO. If I go over to the refund and returns policy page and click quick edit, I'm not going into the page with edit or anything like that. I will now have an option for hide from search results. You go and tick that and you hit update, it will now pop across and it will no longer be indexed. Imagine you've got a website with about 30 pages and you're going to have to go in and out of every page. Quick edit, boom, 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 boom. How simple and easy is that? And it gets even better. And you probably saw it when I opened it up. Let me go to a home page and click quick edit. Again, I'm going to leave it showing so I don't want to hide it from search results. Meta title and meta description. So if you've got a really simple page like a contact and you don't want, you know, all it's got is like a heading and it's already a H1 and it's got the word contact in there maybe. And you now want to reinforce it. I could just go in here now and type in my title description. I'm just going to very quickly do that and change this to say description. I'm then going to hit update and you will now see them appear in the meta title and meta description. So when I'm now looking at my admin dashboard, I will see the title description and whether it's indexed. I don't have to go in to the page like what you have to do with many other tools. Because I know we have page builders and some of the SEO tools are now integrated with our page builder. So we have a tab and I do like that. And I would love it if Slim SEO could perfect and make that better as well. But it's not the end of the world because you've got the feature here. Let's go back to the home page and now I'm going to click edit. So I've shown you how you could very quickly do the meta title and the meta description per page, per post. So this is a page built with Elementor. It could have been done with Gutenberg or any other builder out there. Okay, either way, the same process works where you scroll down and it's brought over my title and my description. I've got an exclamation mark there because obviously it should be a whole lot longer. So if I increase the description, it now becomes a tick. This is where you can add an individual Facebook image or a Twitter X image for social sharing for this particular page. So you've got a default one for the URL, but you might want to have a different one for the page. Now, obviously your homepage, if that was the same as your URL, you'd probably leave it at that. But again, you can reinforce it if you want and just drop it in. And I'm just going to pause here for a moment in terms of the settings. Think about everything you've got to tick off when you're using some other SEO tools. And we often get a bit paranoid with, oh, we got to hit tick, tick, tick. 
And what irritates me is that sometimes you will get a cross or your score is not 100% or near there because you haven't clicked a button that says content AI, which is what Rank Math do. And it really annoys me that I've just got to click it, click a button, maybe not even use any AI credits just to get a tick. And if you've got a client and they happen to see their scores when they go into their admin dashboard, if you allow them to have access, they might look at it and go, why is my scores not hitting 95 or 100 or whatever? You don't want it to come down because you did not click a use content AI feature. It's pointless. If I go to post, it's the same process of what I've just shown you. Title, description, are you going to hide it from index or not? And I might as well just show you that if you had gone to WooCommerce and you had a product, quick edit, scroll down, meta title, meta description, all right? Of course, make sure you set up your alt image descriptions. Make sure you're putting in your keywords, hopefully in the URL or the title of the page. You know, we've covered that in other videos videos and things, make sure you got it in your H1, your H2, you know, some of your paragraphs near the top of the page. And if you keep that in your consideration, you'll be absolutely fine. Now, if you are unsure about things like that, like you might forget to make sure the keyword is in the H1 or the H2, or maybe you created a page ages ago, or someone else created it, and you're a little bit unsure of whether they covered or ticked all the bases, then another SEO tool could be very, very good for you because you're going to get all those ticks to say, hey, we did this and we did that. But if you want an SEO tool where you can install and activate, and I'm not going to say forget because you still got to do your meta title and your meta description and your Google search console and your verification, then Slim SEO is for you. Seriously. Did I ever think I'd see the day where I would say I don't intend to use Rank Math anymore? Nothing against the Rank Math developers. They are all wonderful people. They're founder, the creator, the team behind it. This is not knocking Rank Math because you could almost say I've been knocking Yoast by telling you to use Rank Math and I've been ignoring other SEO providers out there. I went through a three week process looking at the pros and cons of all the other SEO plugins. And no, I'm not going to do a huge video on it because I did it piecemeal bite size here and there in places and I don't want to go through the headache of installing and uninstalling lots of SEO tools but my sanity came down to wanting to keep it simple lightweight easy to manage and this ticks all of those boxes hey I'm Imran from Web Squadron I love using Slim SEO love to see your comments what are you using do you not like Slim SEO maybe you've tried it and you've moved on to something else if you are using something else, why are you using that compared to maybe something like Slim SEO? Can you tell me about any advantage? And if there are any disadvantages that you've spotted that would kind of make you go, no, I ain't going for this, stick it in the comments. Not just for me, but for everyone else too. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time for the pain.